I know this is Re, and I want to talk about the awakening. And um, let's see. I'm trying to fix this. I want to talk about the awakening because so many of us has a have we have awakened, and it's like it's no, you know a lot of us is coming out because we're happy. We happy that we understand that nobody is over us. These white people is not over the, over us. We look at you know a lot of us our depression comes from not knowing ourselves. Because my depression came from me not knowing who I was. So let me talk about the awakening. Now, I come, my background, let me tell you a little bit about my background. I come from, I was adopted. I didn't have a mother. I didn't have a father. I didn't meet my mother until I was like 14 years old, my biological mother. So I was in it all by myself. I had my brother and my sister, but you know, it, it, we, we came from trauma. Because our, our auntie, she really didn't care about us like that, you know. So, as I grew, we never went to church. So, I didn't really know much about church. Now, my auntie, she had the white Jesus hanging up like a lot of houses had back in the day. They had that white Jesus hanging up. And they said, they, they told me that that white man was my God, you know. They just passing on what they were taught. So as I began to get older, you know, we would go to church here and there. They had a church, but we wasn't, me, my brother, and sister, we really didn't have a church. So they would go to church here and there, but they wasn't frequent church goers. So as I got older, you know, when I was like 28, no, I was 27. And um, I was dealing with a lot of oppression, a lot of depression, you know, not being able to pay my bills. And I got tired of living this type of life. So I got on my knees and I, I said, God, if you just show me, if you just show me the truth, I didn't know who I was talking to. But I knew it was a higher power besides myself. I just didn't know who it was. So I go to a church because I'm thinking Jesus is the highest power. So I go to church. Faithful church goer. It was a pastor. Me and everybody else thinking this man is our husband. But I was serious about my walk. Even though I thought this man was my husband, I was serious about my walk. I didn't play no games. I was celibate. I was celibate. Matter of fact, from 28 to the age of 38, I was celibate. Never slept with a man. I mean, I was serious about this walk. So let's rewind it back a little bit. So at the I started going, it was like 1999. In the year 2000, it's a young boy. He was 13 years old. I'll never forget it. It was a children con children's conference. And this boy was 13 years old. So he had an older gentleman with him. And the young buck guy was in the back of me. So what had happened was, the guy asked me, was I saved? And at first, I, I, I didn't know what to say. Because I, I didn't understand what I was doing. I was just going along with the program. So... He was about to walk away and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm saved. So what he did is he said, okay, the young man was standing in back of me and he was about 13 years old, but he was powerful. And he say, well, what do you want? And I say, I want to be free. Why I said that, I don't know, but that's what I said. I said, I wanted to be free. He said, okay. He said, you feel that? I said, nope. Because at first I didn't feel anything. He said, do you feel that? 
all of a sudden, it was a rush from the crown of my feet and it started coming up and it started coming up. I mean, it was like, you know how your, how your body falls. I could feel tingling all through and it, 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 it started from the soles of my feet on up to the crown of my head. And it overtook me and I fell back. Nobody touched me. Nobody did nothing to me. So when I fell back, the young man caught me. The little 13-year-old boy caught me and laid me down. And when I got up off the floor, I felt like tingling, like raindrops in my head. And I felt like pressure right here in the middle of my head. But I didn't know what it was. And certain people that would come around me, I would feel pressure like somebody was pulling my back. But I didn't understand. And I still have it right today. But I didn't understand what it meant. And even today, I'm still learning. You know, certain things when people talking about me, sometimes my forehead, I, it's, it's almost like it's, it's somebody blowing. If it's something good, it's like somebody be blowing in my forehead and I could feel pressure and raindrops. If it's somebody around me that ain't right, my back will tighten up. If somebody have got bad intentions towards me, my back will tighten up. Whenever somebody around me got bad intentions, my back will tighten up. I can look at a person. I can discern a person right away. If you walk up on me, I know what type of person you are. When you get to that point, it's no going back to Jesus. So even though that had happened to me, I was still calling on Jesus, still calling on him because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. Kept reading the Bible, wrote, read, read the Bible. And a lot of us went through this, this, the ones that were serious. You read that Bible three, four times, three, four, just reading it, reading it. So I kept reading this Bible, kept reading this Bible. And all of a sudden, I start, the people in the church, I start kind of like being distanced because it was almost like, okay, I'm celibate. And all these people doing, I mean, they didn't care nothing about it. It, it, it was an act. It, they didn't care nothing about God. What that Bible say do, and they have been there longer than me. And I didn't want, want them to touch me. I didn't want them to hug me. I didn't want them to pray. I didn't want, want to hold hands and pray with them no more. I didn't want to do none of that. So the pastor, the one that I so-called was crazy about, thought this man was my husband. He told me, Kim, if you cannot pray and worship like, no, he called me Sister Kim. If you cannot pray and worship like us in this church, you can no longer come here. And I told him, okay. And I walked out that church. And I cried. When I got home, I cried. But that was the best thing I could have heard. That was the best thing I could have heard. Because I was I was turning into a rebel. I was, you know, I was like, no, that's not right. And I didn't go alone. That pr prosperity preach preaching. I didn't like it. I didn't like it because one thing I know when you look at a dollar bill, when you look at a $50 bill, those were slave owners. And you're telling me that God telling you to collect this money and those were slave owners. They wasn't trying to wait. The, the, they wasn't trying to wake up the people. They wasn't trying to tell the people the truth. And I was learning that Bible. And what people don't understand about the Bible, the Bible is a contradiction between a lie and a truth. What people don't understand about that Bible, this is why it's so many sick people in the church. Because you want to read that Bible. See, the Bible is nothing. It's full of witchcraft. It's full of voodoo. That's what it's full of. And... You want to read Psalms 73. You want to read Psalms 23, but you don't want to live it. You don't want to live it. It's some truth in that Bible. 
And, and, and if you really deep in that Bible, the stuff was going on right today, it says it right in that Bible. If you really deep in it. And once you get, once you begin to grow, that Bible would no longer work for you. It would no longer work for you. It, uh, no, what I'm saying is not the Bible, but the church would no longer work for you. That Bible have a lot of good stuff in it, but the Bible have a lot of manipulative stuff in it that they put in that Bible. So you do not grow. And if you go to Romans, I believe it's in Romans, when it tell you the Bible is nothing but allegory, meaning that the people in the Bible did not exist. I know that's hard to grasp, but, but that is the truth. And what made me so scared to look at other books and start studying other things is, is, is in Revelation when it tell you, do not take and do not add to my word. And I always read that. And it took me years to start studying other things. But when I started studying other things, my whole life changed. Doors began to open up. I wasn't broke no more. Because in the church, most of them people stay broke. They stay broke. It's almost like bad luck. And the only one that's having good luck is that pastor taking all your money. Because that pastor, our pastor, the pastor that when I was at church, when I was in the church, he he kept a brand new car, kept clean ass clothes on. He was living a good life, but we all were suffering. We all were suffering. And I say that to say that the awakening is here. But you got to want the awakening and you have to be serious about life because everybody, if you go to a church, get, be serious about your walk and another door going to open, open and show you other things. And I remember, I'll never forget it. When, when that, when that young man, after when I got up off that floor, a voice, I heard a voice say, never relax your hair. And don't eat no meat. I still struggle with eating meat. So I don't want to lie to nobody. I still struggle with eating chicken, which I should not do. I should, And I know I'm not supposed to do it. And I try to cut back. And then I stop. And then something happened. I'll start again. And I know I'm not supposed to touch any meat. And when that happened, I remember... Like, I used to think that angels really had wings. The way they showed us angels, I really used to think that these angels had wings. But let me tell you, and it, 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 it shocked me when it first happened. I remember I had not talked to my sister. It had been, man, it had been some years I had not spoke to my sister. So my sister, I, I, I went to sleep. I went. To, I got mad at my sister, and we stopped talking for some years. So I went to sleep, and I was about 29, 20, 30, somewhere along there. And I went to sleep. And I remember going in a store. This was a dream. I went in the store. And it was this lady. She was tall, and I wanted to tissue up top. So the lady was like, no, I told the lady, I said, excuse me. Ma'am, could you hand me that tissue up top? She got it and handed it to me and told me, in a couple of days, a young lady's going to call you. And a dream went away. Two days later, my sister had called me. She didn't have my number. I had stopped talking to her. I had stopped talking to her. My sister had called me. And see, when you, when you get deep within yourself and start looking within yourself, when you begin to do that, your dream, I mean, you're going to have dream. People going to come to you and tell you stuff and it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow your mind. And see, this is why they fight against us. 
Because they know when we wake up, we very powerful people and they don't want to see that. They don't want to see that. This is, and they been knowing this about us. They been knowing this. And, th and when, I, when this began to happen, then I begin to understand why they fight against us, why so much chaos in our communities. Because they have to keep you at a low energy. They have to keep you at a survival mode where you don't understand where you're going to get your next meal, meal at. They have to keep you in that beast mode. They don't want you to come out of that because then you may start to think. And they don't want it. When, once you start to think, that's why they make things so hard for us. It, it ain't like that they can't they can't pay us enough money to pay our bills. But they have to keep you at a stage where you're struggling. Because if you're struggling, then that means that you can only, once you work them two, three jobs, you got to go home and you have to go to sleep and get up and then do that all over again. That's why, you see, you're still in slavery. It's still slavery. But you think it's not slavery because you got a roof over your head. That you, so you can go in, you can go in, 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 a, in the house and close your door. And you got a car to drive and you think it's not slavery, but it is slavery. And they have to do this to keep your mind stuck on I got to pay my bills. I got to go to work. I got to do this. I got to do this. That's why the mark of the beast, he said that he'll put it in your forehead and he'll put it in your hands. Because with your hands is where you're going to do the labor. And on your forehead, that's when all you can think about is, is making money. I got to make this money to pay this bill. That's the reason. You have a nice day. Bye. You all have a nice day. This is Ree. Have a very blessed day. Bye.